anyone who lives in a region that it's kind of got hurricanes. Well, they know what this sign is, and they certainly know what evacuation is. An approaching storm can take people through a wide range of emotions. <laughs> Frustration, anxiety, well, that just kicks off right when the storm's not even here yet. And then when it actually does arrive, that gets even more great, as well as, well, you start to see emotions some of us might not even know we had, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Especially if the storm doesn't come sometimes, you yeah. know, or other times whenever it is worse than they even said it would be. It's it's quite something. There's no doubt about it. But one thing for sure, once it actually gets here, we start to shift our whole concern from all of this and it becomes more of a determination to make sure that we can tackle and endure whatever is happening. Mm hmm after the storms actually pass, then you might even experience grief for what you lose or gratitude for what you actually were able to keep. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely a wide range of emotions. Wouldn't you guys agree? It's a roller coaster. I, something to really pay attention to today as we read. We're going to be in Mark 14, 32 through 42. And it's very important. You know, there's, there's a lot going on here as... The time of his arrest and crucifixion are drawing closer. Jesus is now faced with a storm that swirls around him. He prepares for it by praying. And as we study these verses today and talk about them a little bit, just kind of note the details about how Jesus prepared to be our sacrifice for sin. Basically, we're looking for what would Jesus do? What's his example that you can apply to the storms that you face in life? All right, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and thank Socasty for what they do for us, giving us these books and helping us with our study because it really does keep us kind of in track. We love having you guys with us. If you want to reach us, you can get to us at truth.inspired at yahoo.com. That is our email address. And we just want you guys to know that we're here to answer any questions you might have. We're Love it when you guys follow or when you share. That's something that we love to do. Get as many people as you can get and what we need out of it because we want to get some unsaved people to God. But we're just glad that you're with us today again. And today we're going to be talking about willingness and what would Jesus do. And we just need you guys to be with us and kind of see if you get something out of this. Before we do anything else, though, and go into the actual breaking it down, we're going to pray. And we do have some prayer requests. We have some of our members who are going to be going through some surgery. We need to be praying for them. We also have uh, the holidays are coming. We got this happening where we need to pray because, you know, there's a lot of travel and things happening as we get into not just Christmas, but Thanksgiving right now. And we just need to kind of make sure we're praying that people keep in mind that God's got them and don't leave him out the equation and that he does indeed protect us to and from wherever we go. And, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me that they're worried about the world too and everything mm -hmm. that's happening with the world. And so we obviously want to remember Jerusalem in our prayers and want to remember anyone that's, at, that's having issues with... Um, worrying and anxiety we also want to anybody who's sick we want to remember them so even if i don't say something directly or name anybody i'm going to go ahead and say the lord's prayer like we always do and we just ask you to just pray where you are with us as we pray and if you ever have a request we also have a prayer warrior page for those of you who really want to be a part of it you know we would love you to do that or if you just have a request in general we, we will address it i promise yes we do please right. send us your prayer requests so of you can any way that you can reach us if you have to put in a comment that's fine um so we've posted some prayer requests lately and you may notice we've been praying for the same set of people because they've been going through a lot we'll just want you to know that your prayers are being answered we do see changes in these taking effect in these people's lives keep praying for those people and again please send us your prayer request we never have a problem with praying for others all right guys let's go ahead and say that prayer and we invite you to join us today our, our father, father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom, kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil 
Lord, thank you for all your many blessings. I do indeed ask that you help these people that are sick. There's so many of them. You know all of them. I don't need to go down the list because you know every one of them. You even know the people who we aren't aware of that's having problems right now. I ask that you bless any and everyone that needs you right now. Let them know what's going on and find a path and a way to get through whatever problem they're having. God, strength, energy, and guidance. We need it right now. There's people that's got to go through surgery. We need them to be all right and have confidence in knowing that you got them. Keep them safe, please, Lord. There's lots of people that are sick, Lord. Kill them. Let them get better. Let's see some miracles happen, and let's let people know that you're with them, and let them know that your will is being done, and just help, God. Please let them get better. There's even some of that COVID nonsense out there. We It's, it's horrible when anybody's sick. We really need you to help us, God. You are the answer. You're the cure for any and everything. We understand that some things you decide not to answer in regards to our request and other things you have, well, different plan in a different way. But we do still ask and we still bring it to you. And we still ask that you just, like I said, show us the way. Help us, God. We need your help. There's some things we can't do and we certainly can't do anything when it comes to trying to do it without you. That's for certain. So we're coming to you and asking that you not only help with those that are sick and those that are having the surgery and those that are also going through the stress that they're having right now, but we're also praying for the world because it has definitely lost it. We need you more than ever right now, God. It's just be with Israel, be with Jerusalem, be with the USA, be with us, God. We need you more than ever, God. Strength, energy, and guidance. I humbly beg for Christ's sake. In Jesus' name, I'm praying. You're with us. You're helping those in need. There's people who's even chimed in and asked us to bless different things that are going on in their personal lives, which we won't share with others, but you know what those are. So I ask that you even bless those people that's been talking to us and what's happening. Just let them know that you're with them. Unsaved are coming, God. We're praying for the lost souls. We're praying that somebody gets something out of this study today, God. We're praying that you just bless, anoint us, and give us the strength, energy, and guidance as we do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, that was a bit lengthy, guys, but like I said, we want to make sure that you know that we are praying for you, and if you have a request, we will address it, I promise. So make sure you get those prayer requests to us. If you're wondering who I am, I am the founder of Truth Inspired. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that we are always looking to pray for people. And we're here to help you guys understand and try to inspire. That's our whole purpose. That's right. So that being said, let's get on to this Bible study. We're looking at, it's titled Willing. And we're going to read Mark 14, 32 through 42. I'm going to go ahead and get Bob to read that for us and see if we can't follow along. And then we'll break it down. Mark chapter 14. Verses 32 to 42. They came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep your watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer to him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. There's a lot there, guys. And I tell you, it's definitely dealing with things that I think we all can relate to with the most important thing being willing. Kind of keep that in mind as we go. Um, in fact, as you're looking at this, I want to go ahead and right off the bat ask you a question. In what areas do Christians sometimes struggle to submit with God's will? 
I think a lot of times we have trouble with it, especially when it appears that God's will is not going the same direction as what our will would go. Gee, that sounds familiar. Remember last quarter when we were talking about Jeremiah? Mm -hmm. Whose plans is it? It's God's it's plans. Not our plans. That's right. Um, that's a big problem. We don't like to let go of things. Sin. And the Lord hates sin. Mm -hmm. You want to break down a barrier between you and God, you better watch out for and examine your life. Because if there's sin involved in any way, you, and we got a bad habit of making it where it sounds like it's not really a sin. Um, no. Or it's not that bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're looking at this, and as we're reading these pages, we're going to break it down a little bit as we're reading this and talking about it. But you got to realize something. There's no such thing as faking it when it's coming to being committed to God's plan. Um, we're going in the opposite direction if, as that starts to happen and you see what's happening. If that happens, you actually are, well, not going in a good direction because unless you're doing it all in all and you're giving it all to God with a willing heart and obeying God, then you're not being willing. Mm -hmm. And being willing is part of the Christian lifestyle. And if you want a perfect example of that, that's why I said, what would Jesus do? That's what today's, if you don't get anything else out of today, you look at what happened when you read these verses and look at them. What he did in that garden is amazing. What he would endure, what, I mean, the cross, the whole situation. We have things in our life go wrong, but I can honestly tell you, no one's ever put me on a cross. No one's, it might have actually felt like I was ready to die or was not going to make it through a situation. But guess what? Just like in a storm, it has peace in the middle of it, a hurricane. Only God can calm the waters, you know? It's amazing how he does that. There's stories about that, obviously, in the Bible too, you know, where he's been on the ship and he calms the waters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a tendency to not have faith. We think we do, but yet when it's not going our way, we instantly blame God. And I'll tell you right now, I can personally talk from experience. I'm guilty of it. We all are guilty of it. It's rather upsetting because we get in these situations in life where it happens and it's, it's dangerous to fake and just act like everything's going to be okay sometimes whenever it feels like it's not going to be okay and we don't know what to do. Right? Right. But guess what? How many of those situations have you actually made it through in their testimonies now? Some way, somehow, it, it boils down to it's we don't want to go through it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is going to make us stronger. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Let's say the worst thing happens in life. Most people would say, well, they, what if it kills me or I die? Well, you're going to die anyway. I'm going to tell you, it's not something I'm trying to encourage people with today in that sense. What I'm wanting to let you know is, when I die, I know where I'm going. And I'm very confident in the fact that heaven is going to be a wonderful place. So I pray and I just give my faith and try to learn and let God make me learn and grow in Him as we go forth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, it's very hard to obey God when we're in fear. We have to have faith over fear. And as we're seeing this, and if you're looking at all of this, you start to see examples of how God, or rather Jesus, did this in the garden. And he knew all the stuff that was coming. Can you imagine what was going through his mind and what was happening as all this was occurring? It, it's just the emotions are quite something. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. It, it uh, validates that he was fully human while at the same time being fully God. Because he expressed the human emotions of the situation. But then he gave us the perfect example of how to handle it by submitting to the will of the Father. That's basically what happens. You got that. Believers show their love to the Father through their willingness to follow his will. Mm -hmm. That's one of the points out the whole thing today that we're doing. I mean, if you know, again, if you don't get anything else, willingness. You have Jesus here, and he was willing and going to make sure he did the Father's will. 
and he did just that. Are we doing that? In fact, some of our problems look kind of small compared to when you look at this. He's got the weight of the whole world. That's quite something. He, he, I don't think people all know this, so I'll go ahead and just kind of let you know. When it comes to Jesus and what he died for, he didn't just die for people who wanted him to die for them or something in terms of, oh, I'm going to get to heaven type deal. He died for all sins. Mm -hmm. It's now left up to us whether or not you would... Except, except, uh, except what happened the grace and believe that he in him. John 3 16, we kind of go into that one. That's the verse that people generally know. Um, Whosoever believeth him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But the truth of the matter is, he did it for you whether you actually accept it or not. Mm -hmm. The option is sitting there. The free will is sitting there for you to actually accept him. Now, it comes with the responsibility, though, you have to be willing to obey the Father. And what do you do? You follow his law. You follow what he does and tells you to do just like he did through this. And you got to understand that while God might not come out and say, I want you to do this, he will certainly make things happen in life. And as things happen, we have to submit to if it's not what we want, that it may not always be what we were supposed to get anyway. Right. However, the plan is his, God's. And if we trust in him, we can pretty much get through whatever we need to get through. And that's a big deal. Wouldn't you guys agree? Definitely. I think I just kind of took and shortened that quite a bit because a lot of people didn't understand what was going on and the point of the garden. Well, the garden's a big deal because that's where the, they would actually meet a lot of times. Um, and when they would meet to pray, this was actually one of the times where they were meeting right before this event would take place the crucifixion and everything and i think it's funny because as in a way we don't even take time to find a spot to pray but here they are in a time of conflict meeting each other together to pray as fellow believers with the lord you know they were with jesus and they were there praying together mm -hmm. they they did this on a regular basis so I, I just want to point that this is not the one time that they met there. They met there many times at, at the garden there and were there to pray, and Jesus was there to pray with them. This time, though, you have a situation where they're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to fuss about that too much because we got a tendency to fall asleep ourselves. How many times have you been reading the Bible and you just your eyes just close on you? Right. Or how many times have you been, your intentions were good, but you just couldn't carry out what you were trying <laughs> to do? And like I said, you might end up in the opposite direction and not on purpose. Well, I can tell you one thing. I'm grateful for what Jesus did on that cross because no matter what happens in my life, even when I sin, because of what he did, I can ask for forgiveness. And he's going to forgive me. That's a wonderful thing to be able to have a father that's so forgiving. They, you know, just because Jesus died the way he did and what happened and he raised him again on the third day, we're taken care of by believing in that. Now we just need to go to him in prayer. You got to learn how to talk to him. That's why I like to teach you guys about the Lord's Prayer. It's a big deal, right? It, kind of teaches you each little section and everything that needs to go. Tells you how to pray. Exactly. And like I'm saying, as we looking at all this, we're going through it. When we're going through, we see that there's basically, if I don't get anything else out of you guys, it's going to be, there's a couple of points here, that believers find comfort in knowing that Jesus experiences human emotions like anguish and distress. Mm -hmm. You probably got that out of there. You see that believers show love and just to the Father through their willingness to follow His will. So if you want to thank Him for what He did, make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Read your Bible. Learn, and, you know, you're going to see a, a change in your life. Unfortunately, the devil's going to see that too, and a lot of times he'll attack you. But the more you're under attack, the more it can always turn into testimonies. And the way we get through things is to pray. Believers should humbly pray. Knowing they are capable of sin. As we said, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. It's just not going to happen. Only Jesus is our example to follow, right? And then believers should embrace God's will for them. God knows our weaknesses. He, he loves us any way and every way that's possible. 
And when we sin, he can, well, we can actually look at God in the repentance knowing that he will restore us. Does that make sense? Like I said earlier, you turn to God whenever you sin, you ask for forgiveness and he will forgive you. That's right. So what we're going to do today, we've read the, we read it. Bob did real good reading that. I want to talk about, you know, if there's anything that you guys don't understand. I think the only thing in here that's a little confusing might be where it starts talking about taking away the cup. Um, that kind of had to deal with um, a conversation that was with James and John. Jesus referred to the cup in terms of God's wrath. Um the interpretation kind of fit that context. If you looked in Mark, it was Mark 10, 38 through 39. The Old Testament, a cup was a metaphor. Um, it was used as judgment and punishment. Is any of that making sense to anybody? The cup is what Jesus would be drinking, including God's wrath against sin and would ultimately cost him his life. Um, it's a synonym with the hour of Jesus in his anticipation um anxiety is a good way to kill somebody i mean you we we need to let it go we need to give it to god and we need to let it go because if you're anxious guess what happens it's fall apart you just fall apart exactly um we kind of go through that he always enjoyed being with the godhead being the head of that and that never changed we know that as well but you're looking at how this happens the key concepts of the entire thing just basically makes us ask how do we surrender or reflect our love for the Father? And how are we actually equipping ourselves to go through any time of difficulty? Well, the answer to that is what we've already said. Pray. Right? Right. So, I mean, I think you're kind of getting a lot of this out of this. You don't. I don't need to even be going into detail because when you look at it, we're going to pray right now. And one thing that we need to know is embrace God's will for you. So... Father in heaven, I'm summarizing this by just saying that believers, as believers, we do want to find comfort in Jesus and knowing him. Lord, we want to find every emotion that is in there and understand the anguish and distress that even Jesus, well, he witnessed to us on the cross and that we can look up to as an example. Lord, let us show our love towards the Father. Let us show willingness. Let us humbly pray on a regular basis and realize that even though we're capable of sin, you're there to help us and teach us and make us move away from that path in life. New creations, God, that's what we need to be. God, you know our weakness. You love us no matter what. And when we sin, we just turn to you and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. But we want to get away from that sin. Less is better. More is for you. God, we want to be willing and we want to follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you, God, for your plan. Help us follow your plan as well as be willing, no matter what, as long as it be your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. And that's Truth Inspired. Lately I've been through some testings and trials Felt like a teacher that went on for miles but standing here now i can look back and say lord i'm thankful some storms that i thought that i'd never survive but here i am feeling so strong and alive the darkness is past and the morning is bright and i'm thankful i'm thankful like david after Goliath, like Paul and Silas, after the jail, I'm thankful like Daniel, after the lions, Lord, I'm thankful, I'm thankful like Noah, back on dry ground, I'm thankful like Lazarus, finally unwound, every beat in my heart wants to pound, I'm thankful Lord, I'm thankful. I've battled against failure and fear, shadows of doubt, where my hope wasn't clear. But all along, Lord, you were hovering near, and I'm thankful. 
The sins of my past were a thundering roar That echoed the guilt that I could not ignore But it's nailed to the cross And I hear it no more And I'm thankful I'm thankful like David After Goliath Like Paul and Silas After the jail I'm thankful like Daniel After the lions Lord, I'm thankful, I'm thankful like Noah, back on dry ground, thankful like Lazarus, finally unwound, every beat in my heart wants to pound, I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful.